want you guys to get a taste of how does it feel when I actually go into my RAS and I reprogram it a little bit to come up with more internal congruence, with better questions and literally ways that enhance my quantum state just naturally. So everybody again, close your eyes for just a moment. And we're going to in. And I would like for you to simply take a situation from your own life, your past, that wasn't as happy and resourceful as you would have wished. So perhaps it was something that happened while you were going to school. Perhaps it was something that happened in your athletes club or something that your parents told me. Uh, things that were somehow limiting, that didn't make you feel great about yourself and who you are. Pick a specific situation that happened in your life or perhaps something that went off on over time. And I would like for you to make a movie of that situation, that specific event or that situation in general. <coughs> and simply notice you, the way you processed the information, what was happening to you at that time, as well as the people around you. So perhaps it might have been a parent, perhaps it was a sibling, an aunt, an uncle, some family member, or it was a teacher, a community member. And I would like for you to simply look at that other person and to notice that there was something going on with them. Because what we believe in NLP is that there is always a positive purpose. There is always some kind of an intent that wants to be fulfilled. So when someone criticizes another person, what is that person's positive intent for criticizing someone else? Or imagine someone is beating a child or diminishing a child in some way. What is that other person's positive intent for doing that? And for some of you, that positive intent might come very quickly. Oh, they just want to be more powerful or they want to be respected. They want to feel like they're good enough of a parent. They're responsible. Those are usually the kind of answers we get. And then when we dig deeper, what it really usually boils down to is love, belongingness, feeling worthy, feeling peaceful, feeling accepted. In all the thousands of sessions I've done with people asking them, what is the positive intent of other people hurting you? Or what was your positive intent when you hurt yourself or you hurt others? Things that you haven't forgiven yourself for. It usually boils down to just few very basic, basic ideas. We want to be loved, we want to be accepted, we want to know that we have worthiness, that we belong, we deserve. So when you can look at that other person in your past who somehow hurt you, who somehow limited you or diminished you, from that point of view, I would like for you to simply open your heart right now in the way that you do and send them a wave of love, a wave of understanding and compassion. Have that person here in your mind, right here, right now. Just understand and accept that they did the best they could in that given moment, the choice they made. They did the best they could, because you know what? If they could have done better, they would have. They just couldn't at that moment. They didn't have access to their resources, and that's what they did, what they did. So in your heart, just let that person go. Forgive them, say the words, whatever needs to happen right now, so that you feel some kind of closure with that person, so you're not dragging that monkey on your back anymore, <coughs> that unforgiveness, that, I can't believe they did that to me. How can you behave that way? Let that go, just let that go right now. And you're doing it with your intent, with your words, the way you see it. You can even do a gesture of simply releasing them. Imagine that. And then ask yourself, how did that somehow serve me? This whole situation, somehow it must have been important that this happened. How did it somehow turn me into the person that I am now? Or what are the values that I got out of it? What is the gift, the ultimate gift I got out of that situation? And you think about it. In the perfection of the universe, there had to be a reason why this whole thing happened in the first place. 
So go to that place right now and just identify. And for some of you, it might come very easily, very clearly, and consciously. And for some, it might be like, oh, that was a really tough nut to crack. I don't know what it would be. And then trust that the answer will reveal itself. Very nice. I would like for you to bring your attention back to yourself right here in this room now as we're turning on the lights again. Come back to full conscious awareness. <coughs> Blink a few times, stretch. Make sure you're fully back to your body. Thank the other person who was willing to appear for you to make peace with. So this was just a tiny, tiny little taste of what's possible when you start to <coughs> the people, the patterns in your life, the things that have happened to you that somehow keep you from being that very, very high vibration. Like that means said, it's not about what stops you, it's who stops you. Who are these people that we have imprinted into our own neurology, into our own heads? father that's still saying the words that we're now saying to ourselves, right? We all have those. It's just to what degree are we aware of what's happening and then how do we handle it? Do we go into ourselves, oh gosh, I'm not good enough, because that's what they always told us, or are we going to be able to pull ourselves out of it and say, well, that's my dad's way, that's what he used to be. Or think about the kind of things you've learned around money, the hardness of life, or how much freedom you deserve to have. How much is possible for you to achieve in this lifetime? So anytime you can think of someone who has somehow taken that power from you, or you allowed to take that power from you, those are the times when you can go back into the past and relive the situation in a new way and give yourself and the other people resources. And that is a wonderful, very, very powerful modality. And then when I got into shamanism, I realized, oh my god, it doesn't just stop here. We need to go into our ancestry. And so I started creating family reunions where we really take care of those ancestral myths that we're still carrying. For example, uh, genealogically, the whole idea of passing on diseases. How many of you are running around with diseases because your parents and your grandparents had them? Oh, that's a good job, because you wouldn't, right? Yeah. So those are the imprints that we have on a generational level. And then there is also cultural level. What are the things that you're still beating yourself up for that happened perhaps a hundred years ago in your culture that because they never got healed, got passed on to you? And then the same with humanity. What are the things that we're still holding on to on a human level that have been pervading from generation to generation for thousands of years literally? And that's what we're going to get much, much deeper into in a month from now. So what I'm doing is I'm posting a 30-day challenge for you guys. And I know you've heard this a lot of times, you know, the 30-day challenge. I'm actually going to call it the 30-day opportunity. And the reason it's 30 days is because there's some really interesting research that my favorite part is uh, there is a NASA piece of research where they took people, people who want to become astronauts, and they gave them glasses that literally turned their world upside down. The glasses made it so they saw everything upside down. And they were not allowed to take those glasses off for 30 days. And after 25 days, the first person, the first test person, even so they were wearing the glasses, saw the world right side up again. They literally created the neurology in their brain to go around the glasses and make it so that they saw the world again. And after 30 days, every single person in the test group was able to see normal again, even so they were wearing the glasses. So that is astounding information when you think about how easy it is that we can actually retrain our brain. And one of my favorite stories is about a young girl who was actually blind, and through a little machine that they attached to this girl's tongue, they were able to help this woman see. And she clearly saw shapes and colors and movement through her tongue. She learned to see with her tongue. That's what neuroplasticity is all about, which is a fascinating <laughs> method that has been around for the last 15, 20 years. It's getting a lot of big buzz at this point in the scientific world. It's the holy grail of neuroscience. And it is fascinating when we think about those examples to then map into our own life and are able to see, whoa, what am I going to be able to do with that? So that's what we're going to be doing for the next 30 days that I invite you to participate if you choose. Pick a project. What would you like to see within the next 30 days 
that you might have thought impossible or that you were giving yourself the old judgment of I'm too old or I don't have the resources to do it. So write this down, it's at the bottom of your page. What is a third project that you can commit yourself to? And don't make it the biggest, hardest thing you've ever wanted to accomplish. You know, oh, I don't have this book I've been wanting to write for 20 years or so. No, do something that you can achieve, that is possible for you to achieve, that, is, that would really make you all yummy and good inside and gives you a lot of pleasure. So let's think about that and then please share that with your neighbor. What are you committing yourself to for the next 30 days?